Hello, and welcome to Third Thursday at Hoover's. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. We appreciate your flexibility uh, because one of our speakers today is, speak, is joining us live from the Netherlands, where it's 6 p.m. right now. I'm Jerry Flegel, President and CEO of the Hoover Presidential Foundation. And before I start the program, I'd like to share some news with you. We're excited to host a Festival of Trees here at the Hoover Presidential Foundation, located in the Rummel Center at 127 West Main Street here in West Branch. We've got 17 beautifully decorated trees uh, with the Winter Wonderland theme, and they're on display in our gallery for all to enjoy. The display is open daily, Monday through Saturday, 9 to 4.30 p.m. Start a new tradition and explore our Winter Wonderland to put you in the Christmas spirit. And of course, there's lots of other things to see and do on the Hoover campus. So drop by anytime. The museum is open seven days a week from nine to five. The historic uh, uh, site visitor center is open nine to 4.30, um, same day, seven days a week. And uh, the historical buildings are open as well. As a reminder, the Hoover Presidential Library and Museum will be closed on Christmas day and New Year's day. And I hope you will come and visit us soon with your whole family. Also on our website, uh, you can learn about a major fundraising campaign for the renovation of the Hoover Presidential Library and Museum in their exhibit space. It's been 30 years since the last renovation and we're excited about bringing new technology and new storytelling and other updates to the museum. We have a special benefit for Iowa taxpayers who contribute to the Timeless Values campaign where you can earn an Iowa state tax credit equal to 25% of your gift to the project of any size, no matter how much the gift is. There's still time to make a donation before the end of the year to get that tax, brace, tax break and when you file in the spring. As for today's program, I encourage you to enter any questions you have for our, our speakers in the Q&A link at the edge of the screen. You can even vote for someone else's questions uh, if it's of interest to you as, as with more questions, uh, with more votes, they'll tend to get asked first. And content for today's program dates back to June of this year when Annalyn van Kempen, a visiting researcher from the Netherlands, along with Marcus Eckhart, curator at the Hoover Presidential Library and Museum, studied 360 World War I era flower sacks decorated by Belgian schoolgirls, women, and artists. It is the largest collection we know of in the world. They are here to present their discoveries in this unique collection of art. Annalyn joins us from the Netherlands and Marcus is right here on the Hoover campus. Annalyn and Marcus, welcome to Third Thursday. Thank you so much, Jerry. Thank you. Yep. Good to be here. Okay. So oh, it's a little background on this. Annalyn, this first started when Annalyn first contacted the museum with a reference question back in May of 2018. Uh, she had three basic questions um, and uh, we kind of started from there and I think at some point I said well why don't you just come out here and look at our stuff and uh, here we are. <laughs> yeah I uh, intended to come in 2020 but that was uh, delayed because of the COVID and um, I was so happy to, uh, to be here uh, this year. And uh, I look forward to share with you all the finds we have done. It was a wonderful two and a half weeks that I stayed in Iowa City and um, went uh, uh, to West Branch every day. And in nine days, we have uh, seen 360 flower sacks. And I think that's the first time ever that the all flower sacks have come out and, and been photographed and researched and, and the survey we did. So I'm happy to share that with you the, and, and uh, Marcus, uh, this well, afternoon for you and evening for me and evening for the, the Belgian people who are looking uh, and, and Dutch people who are uh, joining us in this uh, presentation. Well, Ann Lynn, Marcus, I'll leave it to you two to take it away on your presentation. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Uh -huh. Then, well, I propose that I, for the first thing, is to um, get you to know uh, what 
are we talking about when we say a flower sack? What, what are we looking at? And I'm going to share my screen and then start a very short video, which uh, will explain to you this wonderful flower sack, ABC, the rooster on an oak branch at dawn. This is perhaps our most famous one, but these are details of it. See the eagle's head there. And the wheat stalk to end with, because that was what uh, what was it all about. It's the um, uh, it's let me share stop share screen. The um, the world in World War One, Belgium was occupied by the Germans, and Great Britain did not allow any food to be imported by the Belgians, which as a highly industrialized and modern and wealthy country, they, they were used to do. So within two or three months, there was no, especially wheat uh, in Germany anymore to feed the population. And it started with one million people who were short of food. And during the war, it went up to six, seven million people. And as you know, Herbert Hoover uh, was one of the founders of this, the Commission for Relief in Belgium. And they initiated uh, relief um, for Belgium worldwide, uh, but uh, also in the United States. And in the United States, I can show you what happened. I will share my screen again and show you. Another thing that she didn't mention was that the Germans took a lot of the food stuff that the Belgians had. Yeah, they requisitioned it. So this was in the, 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 the newspapers in the United States were uh, very important to ask for money, to ask for food. And in the beginning, in November 1914, they asked for flour in sacks. And why in cotton sacks? Well, that was with a purpose. They said, okay, make it 49 pounds, which is in kilos about 24 kilos. Um, because the cotton will help the American cotton industry and the flour sack, the, the sacks of flour will be easy handled by the Belgian bakers and the families. And also they, they said, okay, the cotton can be reused in Belgium for underclothing and household textiles. So it was with purposefully that the cotton was used for sacks for flour. And here you see what happened is all over the United States. Go and look in the newspapers of November 1914, December 1914. You will see all local newspapers with articles, newspaper articles about sent money, sent flour to Bel for Belgium. And all kind of associations, churches um, uh, collected this relief and it was sent to the ports. And this was done by railway. And you see from in the, the West, it went, went to San Francisco, Portland, Los Angeles. In the East, it went to New York City, to Boston, Philadelphia, Baltimore, there was in Halifax in, in Canada, and also more to the South, there was 
New Orleans and Galveston. So these were the trainloads of flour for Belgium that started in November 1914. And here it is in, brought into a ship. And have a look what, uh, what the ships did. They, they, they were steamers. And of course it was winter time. So it was not an easy transfer uh, on the Atlantic. And from the east, they went straight away to Rotterdam. That'd be good. And from the west, they went, fortunately, the Panama Canal had been opened in 1913. So from the West, they could go through the Panama Canal and then first to New York to have some fuel and then go to Rotterdam because Rotterdam was the Dutch Harbor port where the flower was going to. Here it arrives in Rotterdam and it is taken out of the, the ship into barges to transfer to Belgium. And the distribution of the food relief from the port of Rotterdam into Belgium went through the canals. Here you see this to Ghent or to Antwerp, and then from Antwerp to Brussels, and also more over the river to Limburg, through Maastricht, to Liège, and uh, more the south of, uh, of Belgium. And Luxembourg uh, received it, uh, its flower by train. So the trains left from Brussels or from Liège to this part of the country. And later on, the Commission for Relief also took the food relief for the northern of France. So this, this is the, yeah, it, it, we, we can't imagine that the, the journey this flower and this food relief uh, made. Yeah, something that, that we don't think about is that the, the edge of that map is where the front line would have been, so. Yeah. That would have been how far the Germans had gotten and the Brit and the French and the British and the Americans, not the Americans yet, and we're fighting at that point there. Yeah. Now the flower arrives from the barge in the bakeries. They take off the flower. And here you see a village who is very, very happy with the with the bread. And you see, this is the shape of the bread they made. They, ma they made, uh, yeah, round bread. And what, what was very interesting because tonight, yeah, we, we are talking about the flour sacks. The, the empty sacks were um, exhibited in the baker's windows. So you see, and people came there to see because now they knew, okay, this bread has been made from very good American and Canadian flour. So people were fond of that. And because of this enthusiasm for the prints on the flour sacks, the Belgian ladies and girls decided to start decorate them, which of course was uh, was meant to be eh? because it, it should have been because the Americans said okay uh, use cotton sacks because then they can reuse it um, here you see it's it's the only photograph that is in that in four years four years time I have uh, found that uh, Belgian girls are actually working on the flower sacks and eh? they are embroidering them uh, but also, they made clothes of it. And have a look at the cute 
very efficient, but very simple uh, cotton dresses, trousers, and jackets. Yeah, in our collection here, probably half of the clothes are, are children's clothing. Yeah. yeah. So like the little, the top left little, it says American Commission, that's a little, a little dress and the top right is a little dress and then yeah, this is uh, one. Some of them are undergarments, and and then the bottom, the two on the right side towards the bottom, are both Eight. little jackets. Yeah. That have more colorful flower sacks instead of just American Commission on those. And I was excited to see this cloth because that was the first time in four years that I saw clothes. I I didn't I haven't seen them yet in uh, in Belgium. I do not know any collection who has uh, clothes clothing in it. Now, as you saw, they, they did not only uh, make clothes of it, but also they decorated them. And why did they decorate it? Well, that was because they knew that the, the flower and the sacks were, were uh, sent to them by, by charity, by fundraising in the United States. And it's very interesting that this lady in Herstal, which is near Liège, um, they organized an exhibi exhibition um, and invited the CRB delegate, Mr. Aerosmith, in 1916. And this, the president of the, um, of the commission says, we thank you, you who have been so kind and so generous to send us so many bushels of flour. We have had the pleasure to embroider and beautify the empty bags and to employ them a second time as a matter of charity. So a second time as a matter of charity. Be welcome American benefactors who have prevented our unhappy little country from starving. And this exhibition raised 2000 francs in today's money, that's more than $10,000 for the, the relief and to help the prisoners of war who were captivated in Germany. And the other thing that happened was, I will just go back to this map, is they didn't only stay in Belgium where they were sold, but also they went from uh, Belgium to Rotterdam to London and then were sent to New York where they were distributed uh, in the United States, but also with the purpose and the aim to sell them and to have new money to send back with relief goods to Belgium again. And here you see how they arrived in the United States Newspaper articles, again, Belgian people show appreciation of American uh, relief and aid. And this one we will see is one of the, of the flower sacks that is in the, in the museum's collection. And uh, well, this is a bit hidden, but it's also one in the collection. And uh, so you see the flower sacks arrived back in the United States. Now, a, a little, uh, what happened then? Well, uh, at, the, the, at the, the office, the American office of the CRB, there was a stock of uh, flower sacks. And after the war, they didn't know what to do with it anymore. But they decided, okay, let's send it to the Hoover Institution with, with all the archives of the CRB going to Palo Alto. So here you see a lady in the Hoover Institution, Suda Bain, who during uh, several years took care of sorting out and listing the flower sacks that were uh, left after the war um, in the archives. And then what happened? How did they come in uh, West Branch? Well, that was in 1962 
the flower sack collection arrived from the Hoover <coughs> Institution, from the Hoover Archives into West Branch for the Presidential Museum. So this is how the, uh, this collection... Uh, Good actor for help, for help mode. What's that? Okay. Um, now, the, the very interesting thing is what were, now you know that the, how, how they arrived in the museum, uh, how did, what was the origin of the flower sacks? And this is what, what we saw uh, this June, we saw all kinds of uh, states, relief organizations, who have sent flour in their sacks to Belgium. And this is a little show of all the different uh, trademarks and relief organizations. And, and notice when you're looking at these that there's a lots of American colors, red, white, and blue symbolism, and then there's also the Belgian uh, black, red, and yellow. So you'll see both of those are very prominent throughout these and symbols, patriotic symbols of both countries. Minneapolis, here we have New York, another one from Buffalo, New York, the gold dust. Thompson Milling Company in New York. Then the Belgian relief flower, Toledo. Ann Arbor. Chicago flower gift. Kentucky, Indiana, Evansville, another from Indiana, South Carolina, Charleston, Charleston South Carolina, yeah, Pennsylvania, this is Pennsylvania, and this one too, Rosa Bell is Pennsylvania, and here another one from Lewisburg, Pennsylvania, and this one Camden, Delaware, Virginia. This is another one, Richmond, Virginia. This is from Dayton, Washington. Los Angeles. California. San Francisco. Visalia. And then the Rockefeller Foundation, the ABC flower. And here are some Canadian flower, the origin, Ontario, Key Wetton, and then East Missouri. And here we are again with Kansas. Yeah, I like that last one there, how it says East Missouri, Canada, because <laughs> not to be confused with Missouri, uh, United States. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's manufactured by uh, the firm in, in London, Ontario. So they really did a job to, uh, to get this flower to Belgium. Yeah. Um, now, when you're looking, if, can I start for a second, Arlen? When you're looking at these, notice uh, there's several of these that have uh, like the very one in the middle. It says Belgium, and then it's curved across the top, and then relief flower. You will see that same design used in a in a number of these, and you'll run across that a couple different places. So you can see, yeah, like that there, that pattern of that, the curved Belgium, and then the different, and that's the the sans serif font, um, and then you got the flower being in the in the this serif font, but you'll, you'll see that in a, in a bunch of flower sacks that that basic design was used for a number of them. Yeah. And um, I know um, in my research showed that uh, this was the print that was uh, suggested and recommended by the Northwestern Miller, the, the Miller's relief uh, movement from Minneapolis, Mr. 
Edgar, William Edgar from Minneapolis, who was the editor-in-chief of the Northwestern Miller, the newspaper for the specialized for the, for the Millers. And he proposed this Belgian relief flower uh, print. Uh, okay, now, if you had good attention, you would have seen there are, and Marcus asked me, there are no from Iowa. Are there any, what did Iowa do? Well, Iowa was really uh, very early also with the, with the, the, the flower, boat flower, wheat There's flower. There's that design again. And yeah, it's, it's from Davenport. Well, the Western flour mill and Phoenix milling. And this is another one. Yeah, and Sioux City is the next one. Yeah. And Shelton, Iowa. And this is Shelton, Iowa. And this, this one is in the Hoover Institution Library Argus in, in California. And there's another one. Huh. And that is the cornmeal one. And fortunately, Iowa has also a cornmeal, and this is a, a dress, and, which is in the State Historical Society of Iowa. So if you are in the neighborhood over there, go and see it, because it's a very cute little dress. And if you see it, know that it's, it has been made uh, from a, a, a cotton sack uh, which brought cornmeal to Belgium. Yeah. And, and notice the bow there at the top there. That's, that's the Belgian colors. Again, that's, yeah. you'll see that similar ribbon in a number of flower sacks or on them somehow. Yeah, the red, yellow, and black. So that's about Iowa. Now, what was the working process that Marcus and I had um, <laughs> when we started our research and our survey? Well, Marcus took out uh, a dozen of dozens of, of uh, boxes dedicated to preserve the flower sacks. And one by one, he took them out and we would find things like this. And you will ask, who is this fellow, Marcus? We knew who he is. Yeah, yeah this is King Albert of Belgium. Um, and, but when you look at, you know, and then we've got the lion there, of course, which is one of the symbols of Belgium. But then the lion behind him is actually the Belgian flag laying on its side. It's in black and white, so you don't see that it's red or black, red and yellow but yeah. that would be the flag there as well. And I don't do French very well, so Anneliene can explain what it says in French there. Yeah, well, it says souvenir de la guerre. Um, so 1914-1915, a souvenir of a war souvenir. And Anderlecht is the place where Anderlecht, the, the place near a suburb of Brussels where uh, the girls who made this uh, draw the design. Yeah, Andalict is one of the big areas where we see a lot of the flower sacks come out of an Andalict. So it's 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 one of the boroughs. So so Brussels is, is made up of a number of boroughs. Like think about New York City has the five boroughs. It's got you know Manhattan, Staten Island, the Bronx, Brooklyn. Those are all different parts of the same city. Well, Brussels is made up of, of more than I think more than 20 different boroughs. Um, and this one is on the, Andalect is on the south, south southwest side of, of yeah. the center part of, of it Belgium. It has been one, one of the schools in, in Anderlecht. And this A is the the initial of King Albert. Uh, with, with a, a, a nice... So it'd be the monogram is what we call yeah, it. Monogram. Yeah. And again, note the patriotic Belgian colors there. Yeah. And this is Queen... Uh, Queen Elizabeth, uh, Albert's wife, and 
her monogram also shows up in embroidery and the monogram show up both A and E on several of the of the flower stacks. And then we were surprised to find Mr. Wilson, Woodrow Wilson, the president of the United States at that time. Again, and all of the ones all the ones that we could tell if you notice in the bottom left hand corner there's Andalucht and then 1915. Um, so yeah. clearly at the time that these are made the war hadn't gone beyond 1915 but Andalucht is labeled on uh, about 40 percent of our collection is, is from that, that district. Yeah and you will ask maybe what this is well this is a photograph it, it has been a postcard uh, which was cut and then embroidered and fixed here on the, on, on the flower sack. And that's like a little book is what that opens up yeah, into being. It's a little, so. little book. And this is to show, um, there are a lot of three dimensional shapes. And, and to give you an idea of the dimensions of the, uh, of the items. This is a bag. And here I show one to give you an idea of the dimension of the of the flower sack. And I think that one would have been stuffed for a pillow. It would it would have come unstuffed. Yeah. Yeah. Some lovely and pants. Lovely pants. And we, we <laughs> found yeah, but we, we found the label inside the, the pants and it it's it's a real um dressmaker. How uh, in, in in one of yeah. the important streets in Brussels. Yeah. And undergarments. The undergarment. And then we had a surprise in one of the seams of the those uh, clothes. We found flower. Um, that was a huge surprise to me. To, to, to have flower being still at present and, and surprisingly a number of the flower sacks actually have flower in them. Uh, yeah. So it clearly got wet at some point and then the, before the flower was emptied and then, or when they washed them, it didn't come out. I don't know, but there's surprising numbers of flower residue in these things. Yeah. So very, and in this dress, especially this small, this, this little dress, there was a lot of flower <laughs> all around the seams. There, there was this dots of flower. Yeah, and we left it there, but it's one hundred more than one hundred year old. I don't think yeah. I eat it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, as you see, we were in the reading room, and um, this was the best way to get the the, the photographs of uh, of the pieces. Yeah, so and we lay we... them on that that whiteboard, a, a piece of foam core that yeah. then I could tilt up so that she wouldn't have to lean way over the top of the camera, um, and it was just a safer safer working environment that way for both of us. And you can see the yeah. the cart behind us loaded up with boxes. Um, that we just bring another box down, and and when we were when she was waiting for a new box, she would be working on looking at papers papers from the from the archival collections. Yeah, and then we had the visitor for me, uh, a festive uh, reunion with Lindsay Cole McRae. Uh, I met Lindsay four years ago, and she introduced me four years ago. She she was in Leiden in the Netherlands. And she wrote uh, a very interesting book, which is called Feed Sacks. I will show it here to you. Uh, and Feed Sacks um, has a chapter in it on flower sacks, the World War I flower sacks. And um, Lindsay went to see Marcus. So in the, in the chapter, she describes um, and, and also quotes um, what Marcus tells about the flower sacks. And for me, that was the first introduction to the museum. And Lindsay lives in Iowa City. So we had a reunion and she came 
because she was curious to, to see what we are doing during our survey. Yeah, she came out two or three days. And then we had some other visitors from the historic Phillips house where I stayed during my two and a half week stay, also from Iowa City. And we have been looking at this huge piece, uh, very nicely uh, embroidered. Yeah, one and of the things, the, the larger ones like this uh, tended to have not been exhibited at all in the previously. So uh, a lot of the smaller ones, uh, uh, 50 years ago, the old museum exhibits had them like like posters, or they'd be, you just you know flip, flip through the pages and they'd be all there. And, and they got a lot of uh, exposure to a lot of different types of light, um, ultraviolet light from fluorescent bulbs, that type of things. And, and a lot of them have faded a, a fair amount. But this one, one of the things that's unique about this, in my opinion, is that it's, when we see some of the details, the blues are just striking of the flowers because you don't, see that in some of them very well. Even the rooster has been has had a lot of uh, light exposure to it and it has faded some. So it's not as sharp or crisp or bright as it would have been uh, 100 years ago. Yeah. And now this was the last one, number 360. I'm uh, <laughs> <laughs> very uh, excited to have seen them all. Um, now- and that one is painted. So that is, that's painted um, yeah. for the most part. Again, you've got your Belgian symbols. You've got Queen Elizabeth of Belgium and King Albert. Um, and, and, and again, if you look in the bottom left, it says Andelect as yeah. well. Brussels. So, yeah. The variety this of things are made out of these. Now, uh, okay, so this was our work in process. And now, um, what I like to, to continue with is to show you um, the school's project from the Belgian girls. And this was something that uh, Marcus told me, you know, in our collection, there are a lot of school projects from Belgian girls' schools. So here you see the names of those schools. Um, and what I, when I was in the Hoover Institution uh, in California, in Palo Alto, I found a lot of photographs uh, which were sent to the CRB to, with, with a thank you and um, uh, uh, yeah, so they they made these photos, and we do not have the photographs of the embroiderers. Uh, but I thought, why not show these photographs? Because it might have been these girls who have uh, embroidered and decorated the flower sacks that are now in the collection. So what you will see now is um, a combination of. Belgian girls in their schools and in their classes and the different uh, embroidered and decorated flower sacks. So these are the nine-year-old girls, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. The, and they, they made this kind of uh, flower sacks. Yeah, little bags. Yeah. These were the youngest girls. And this is Bertha. She was nine years old. So we're getting to a little bit older girls. Victorine, 11 years old. And she made this. This is a really neat one. It's a bag. It folds up into a little pouch. Yeah. And then 11 Elizabeth years old. 11 years old. Also from Anderlecht. And now we get to the girls more 13 years old. This is from Nassonje. And this is a, a very small class doing um, sewing by hand. And you, you, you see that they, they, it, it really was a subject in their school to have these lessons. And also with the sewing machine. 
So they might have been doing also the made some clothing from the flower sacks, but like this. There's that same design of the Belgian relief on there. Yeah. And this is, she was 13 years old. And here you see, um, I will get back to this photo because you will see, here you see that this girl, these girls um, are well-to-do girls. So it, it, it was not that everybody went to school in that time of, of uh, 100 years ago. Um, th there were professional girls' schools and um, they, but you, you can see the kind that they are dressed that they came from, uh, well, the higher class families in Belgium. And th they were asked to, to decorate the flower sacks. This is also a very neat folded one. Here's a girl of 15 years old. We know her name, Yvonne Kavran Gutsum. A little shoe from Anderlecht. Guitar or violin. Catcher. Yes. I've already seen that one. Also Anderlecht again. Yeah. You are the, the king and the president and the queen. And their monograms. And look how neatly they've done that. That's really, really nicely done. And then the older girls, a Jugendstil kind of style with nice lace. Here also the heart of lace. A tea cozy. And this, here I stop it because this is new in the museum's collection. And um, there are three of them. And we had three that were just donated this fall. Um, pretty excited to, to get them. Um, and uh, and Anneliene has actually found correlations of them in the collection with the other ones. And it's it's kind of fun to look at them because they're all three are Andalect. Um, you have those other photos of these, is that right, Anneliene? Yeah, I well, I, I only show now the, the, the three pieces that are new in the museum's collection and not okay. the other ones. But, here you see Anderlecht, and yeah. this one is Anderlecht, and this again is Anderlecht. It's and this one is one of the interesting things that you can see on, on one like this one. Uh, this one would be a pillow, so I think at the top left corner it's not sewn shut, so it's a full flower sack that you would then stuff with stuff for a pillow. But when you get down below um, and you're looking at the word Belgium, where the letter, where it dots the I there, you can actually see on this one where the design was drawn out with pencil. Can you get closer yeah. on that one? Yeah. I will try. You're up in the difficulty level here, sorry. Uh, no, it's, that's, that doesn't work. It, it worked yesterday, but not today. But here, a, a very, you see the shade of, of the, the pencil that, that has drawn the, and also here. Yeah. And it looks like the letter G was actually pushed over quite a bit for the, to the right. Um, but yeah. there's, this is not an uncommon thing with these, where you see these pencil lines where the, where the pattern was going to be one way. And then they ended up, when they actually get to doing the work, it gets changed and it's done a different way. Yeah. Um, which is, it's, is fascinating. Even the rooster has lines of pencil out for things that were done differently than they are. Yeah. So these are the girls. And now, uh, the, yeah, the Belgian girls who uh, uh, added to to the to the decoration of the flower snacks. And I asked myself, when I, of course, when I was in West Branch, but also afterwards, is there any proof that Lou Hoover was involved in the? Uh, in the, in the the decoration or anything yeah, that uh, uh, that has to do with the flower sacks and um, uh, I think it was Spencer Howard who took out the clippings the cut the news cuttings 
uh, and we found uh, articles about Mrs. Herbert Hoover uh, in the San Francisco Bulletin in 1915. And here, uh, how Belgium keeps alive, Mrs. Hoover tells of giant task. And in fact, she was a fundraiser. Um, she wasn't called th this title at that time, but I, as I'm reading these articles and know what she was doing, she was a fundraiser for Belgium Relief and for the Commission for Relief. And uh, some months later, a very interesting article, an interview in the Sunday magazine. And it, um, it, it's, it talks about Mr. and Mrs. Hoover. And you see here the couple. And um, the question is asked, who are the Hoovers? Um, but that was a stranded American tourist who were at that time in London at the beginning of the Great War. And Americans at that time in 1915 were still asking the question, um, who are the Hoovers? But they said in Belgium, no man, women or child have to be asked who Mr. and Hoover are because they know. So you see here that it was not only Herbert Hoover, but it was also Lou Hoover who was very involved in the uh, Belgian relief efforts. And then Craig Wright, the archivist, um, the, he came with this very interesting letter. There's no date, there's no name on it, but the, uh, the letter comes from the 14 East 16th Street in New York. And I, I have made a transcription of, uh, of, of the quote in the letter, and that is, Dear Mrs. Hoover, I shall be so glad to help with the touching flower sacks which could be used for porch pillow covers in the country or for laundry, laundry bags and various things. And then they should be sold for $1.50 or $2. And I'm sure we could easily dispose of a thousand or more. Now, in today's money, one fifty or two dollars, that, that would be around thirty-five and fifty dollars. So imagine that the the person writing this letter um, is thinking that she can dispose a thousand or more with this price. So you see, fundraising again. Mrs. Hoover was involved in the flower sack movement. Now, Mr. Hoover was in another way um, involved in the flower sacks, but that was because um, he was gifted this uh, rooster on an oak branch at dawn. And this is one of the top pieces in the museum's collection. And it's was designed by this painter and his name is Piet van Engelen and he signed it. He was uh, an art teacher at the art school in Antwerp and he designed the rooster. Um, he, he was 52 years old. Uh, he, he was born in 1863 so he was 15, 52 when he designed this beautiful rooster. Now, Marcus, explain what we are looking at. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of things happening in this one that are not apparent until you look at it a little bit closer. Um, so we've got, it's actually described in, in the newspaper what, when Herbert Hoover was given this, but we had the rooster on an olive branch there. Sorry, I'm pointing at it and can't tell probably, um, but where the cursor is, there is the head of an eagle. There's an eagle in the middle of this flower sack that is kind of uh, shadow stitched. I don't know what the right term for that would be. That's got its wings outspread. So she's there's the wing feathers there. It's kind of in the sun as the sun is rising there, but we got the eagle. Yeah. And then right below the, the foot, the forward foot is you can see some stars. That would actually be the, yeah. the shield of the United States with the, the stars on it. 
Um, sometimes yeah. that's got stripes on it as well. Yeah. And then uh, we're pretty sure that the outline where the ABC is was painted on there or on top of the printing that was already there. Um, but then it's really interesting how, how he used the negative space around those letters to the stuff that goes behind them and stuff that's on top of them. So you've got this layering things that are happening. Um, yeah. This was not done by school girls. This was clearly done by professionals. Yeah. We know who have done this because I have found the translation of an article which appeared in a newspaper and which has a manifestation of gratitude towards the Commission for Relief in Belgium has taken place lately in Antwerp and a flower bag embroidered by some ladies of the well-to-do class of Antwerp adorned by the painter Piet van Engelen was presented to the president and that was Mr. Hoover. So Mr. Hoover has been in uh, July, August 1916 in Antwerp and received the rooster. Um, now, for um, what I also promised you is to have a look at the Belgian artworks on flower sacks done by the artist. And I like to show you this ones. This is Josef Dieriks. And this is Rose. Rose, who you? It's a flower sack design that has a very similar design to this. On it's I don't believe that one's in our collection though. Yeah. This is Mr. Van Varenberg. This is M.A. Stevens. He painted his son, his baby son. This is an unsigned drawing. Know the I artist. wish I knew what that was about too. I don't, there's probably some local legend that talks about that. Yeah. And then the two of uh, Jean Brusselmans. And there's one of Philibert Cox and another one of Jos Albert. And now I think it's um, 10 minutes to, to, well, another two minutes. Well, I, I think we better um, finish this with the spotlight on the famous flower sack. We have shown you so many photographs yet. And here is the spotlight of some highlights. This one was made by a group of nuns. This is that one I was talking about. Look at that exquisite embroidery. That's the blue of those flowers I was talking about that hasn't faded. backside of it. This one's both painted. These, all these uh, metals are painted on there and the flags. Notice Japan as well. Star Spindle Banner.
more flour residue. Up from Manitoba, this is where that flour sack's from. This is the moment to stop my to share my screen. What should we be without you? Is the the last sentence of this uh, embroidery, and um, I think that this flower sacks show that the context between uh, the continents was unbelievable and still sh is shown by the flower sacks in your collection in the museum's collection. Jerry, here we are. Okay, this is well, our presentation. That is a terrific presentation. I mean, boy, the comments, the positive comments are <laughs> are flowing in on there. I mean, and and uh, you know, one of the persons I know asked, "What is the CRB?" And sometimes all of us that are so connected close to Hoover forget about it, but it stands for the Commission for the Relief of Belgium, and that's basically one of the largest and, and the first uh, huge humanitarian efforts that was was made, and that's how. The flower sacks uh, are, are intertwined in the in the uh, story. So, got a few questions, and I know we got just a few minutes left. So, I'm going to go ahead and rattle off some questions. Uh, uh, you know, and if uh, uh, both of you could uh, answer, that'd be great. So, uh, first off, is did the Germans seize any of the donated flower sacks, and were the Germans con concerned about public opinion if they allowed the Belgians to starve? Um, well. I think the best is because of the time just to answer the, the fact that about the flower sacks that we know of, uh, no, they did not seize the flower sacks. Maybe there was an exemption, but in general, no, it, it, they did not do that. No. Okay. okay yeah, part of the agreement was that the, that the uh, CRB would control the flower because there was concern that the Germans would empty the flower sacks and put in inferior flower or mixed with sawdust or who knows what, um, so that it would not have the nutritional value that they were trying to provide to people. So I see. Okay. There was, that was very much insisted on by the Hoovers. And I would say probably that the Germans were concerned about the public perception of that. Okay. A, a follow-up question is uh, from Tim. Could the lettering on the sacks be bleached out so that the sacks could be used for garments? Oh, yes. 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 But the, the Belgian didn't do that. That was the funny thing about it, okay. uh, because the Belgians uh, really loved the exotic American and Canadian trademarks, letters. Um, they, it, it was also a, a kind of uh, learning another language because it was English. So it, it was, um, it, it, yeah, exotic for them. They loved it. Okay, great. And uh, a question from Karen is, how many flower sack collections exist? Do you know the answer to that? Oh yes, <laughs> yeah. I figured you had an idea. Go to go to my website. There's a, a I, all the public collections I have I know of are mentioned on my on my website under museums. So go there and you will see it and count them. It will be a, a dozen in Belgium, more than a dozen, and more than a dozen elsewhere. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, a question came from Jill is, are images of the flower sacks available on the museum website? Maybe Marcus, I don't know if you could answer yeah, that. There, there are a few that have been up there. Um, that's one of the things that we're working on. Uh, hopefully within the next year, we will have a large number of them up on our website. Um, that's something that we're working on. Um, 
uh, Anna Leanne has got a, she's got photos of all of ours and she's actually shared those with us. So we have those. Um, but, yeah. and, and if you do go to her blog, her blog is, uh, it's half of them are translated to English, but you can translate, uh, Google will translate them for you. Um, but they're very interesting topics and they get into some pretty fascinating stuff. And there are lots of images of different flower section there as well. Okay, great, great. Um, and uh, Joanna asked, did the Canadian flower sacks go to the U.S. to be shipped out or were they shipped out of Canada? No, they were shipped out of Canada. Yeah, okay. because Canada was part of the, of the in Great Britain with the, um, oh, how would you call that? The Allied powers. Sorry, the Allied powers. So as, as Canada in that time was part of uh, the United Kingdom, um, they were immediately in war with uh, with Germany as, as Great Britain was and they sent flour straight to um, from yeah to London and then to Rotterdam yes, yes. okay okay well great and uh, Marlene asked are you writing a book with this information and photos <laughs> <laughs> well I start with my blogs and I, I really look forward to, to make a book one day but I think the, the blogs are for now the, the main information point and, and go there. And, and there are, I think I, I made 60 blogs on, on flower sacks in Belgium because I have a large information about the Belgian collection as well. And now uh, with the information I got in the United States also on the American collections. So okay. there, there are lots of blogs and I hope in future there will be a book. Yes, thank you. Okay. And then uh, Bruce writes, did flower sacks come from the Belgian Congo? Oh, no. yes. No. <laughs> okay. All right. That's, However, that. the Belgian uh -huh. Congo flag is on a number of the flower sacks. And when you see it, the, I was trying to, um, this is funny because uh, uh, we had some lace researchers in who were lo looking at our World War One war lace probably three or four years before, I don't know, the end. Um, uh, Evelyn McMillan was one of those people. She may be watching this as well, but but she, um, we were looking at these and there's like, what is this? We keep seeing this blue flag with a five pointed gold star. We were trying, what is that? <laughs> and I was able to figure out that that is the Belgian Congo flag. Now you see it in a couple of different ways. You see it both that way. Um, and also sometimes you'll see like the Belgian, the three stripes and, and then like in the US flag, how the stars and stars are up in the, feel the blue in the left corner, you'll see the Belgian flag will have that that rectangle with that gold with the blue and then the gold five pointed star. And it's a large star. So it's not like it's a little dinky okay. star. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Sophie uh, asked, it seems uh, um, that most of the uh, uh, Belgian flags or excuse me, flower sacks came from maybe the Brussels area. Is that correct? Or could you tell? Um, what we show here is um, the, the museum's collection. Uh, many come from the Brussels area because uh -huh. they come from the girls' schools. And uh, I think uh, seven or eight of the nine girls' schools were in the suburbs of Brussels. But in Belgium, no, it was Antwerp. Large ones in, in the Hoover Institution in California has, uh, I think, 60 from that region in Antwerp. Um, in Liège, uh, there are many that stayed in Liège and um, so in Belgium and, and also from Limburg and oh no, F, we didn't show any, F, we didn't show all 360 pieces, but they they come from all over the country. Oh yes. Okay, great, good. And then uh, the other honor it is, is <clears throat> obviously, and maybe I think we could send this information out. Uh, Brad always sends an email out to everybody in case they ever want to see a replay on this. Uh, but uh, people are asking about the name of uh, uh, Ann Lynn's blog and also your website. So um, if we make, uh, Ann Lynn, we make sure Brad has that information and we'll send that out because obviously there's a lot of people interested that would like to one, follow you on your blog Great. and and two, check out the website on that too. So Great. at least until you write your uh, uh, book anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah. And her blogs are, are quite, ex quite long and detailed. So they're not a they're not a you know a two minute read. There's a lot of information that she. she I'm a researcher. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's 
and and one thing that's been really hard for me when I look at these things is I do not I've mentioned this earlier that I do not speak French or read French I, I've, I can pick up some words here and there but but her skills with the language and quite frankly I think she speaks English better than I do um, <laughs> oh no 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 but it's, that, that's true that uh, Marcus good that you mention it well the 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 success of my research I think is that as, as a child and, and a young girl, I learned to speak French because part of my family is from France. And, um, and of course I learned uh, English at school. And I think these two languages, so, uh, Dutch or Flemish and French and English, uh, you have to understand it to understand, first of all, the work of the CRB. Huh? Mm. But it's, it's in these three languages, that you can do the research. Um, so yeah, you were right. It's it's very important to, uh, these languages are, yeah. Okay, important. well, very good. Well, again, I think we're a little past, we ran a little over, but we had so many good questions and so many positive comments about the, uh, um, the you know, the presentation and, and uh, one of them actually made a uh, comment they can't wait for the replay because they want to be able to pause and look at uh, uh, the flower sack, uh, you know, intricate details. And I'm sure that there's a lot of people that are thinking that same thing. So, you know, Anne Lynn and uh, Marcus, thank you so much for this presentation uh, on there. And a reminder to everybody that is on, this will this uh, will also replay at six o'clock central time tonight uh, on there. And I think you can just use the same uh, Zoom link that you did to sign in if you wanted to see it again. And Brad will be sending out an email uh, and we'll get the website and uh, uh, Anne Lynn's blog. So you'll have all that information. So again, um, the, you know, Anne Lynn and Marcus, thank you so much for the uh, for uh, a, a terrific presentation on that. Thank you. Okay. Oh. Well, I'd like Thanks to uh, re remind everybody, the Presidential Library is still open seven days a week from nine to five and it will be closed on Christmas Day and New Year's Day. We're going to let Marcus take a day off uh, on there. And I, I'd invite you to visit the temporary exhibit now open called Deliverance, America and the Family in so uh, the Famine in Soviet Russia, 1921 to 1923, featuring accounts of numerous humanitarian efforts by Herbert Hoover and the ARA, American Relief uh, Association, as they worked to feed 11 million people a day 100 years ago. It's a fantastic story. And that exhibit will close on Saturday, December 31st. So be sure and get there uh, before then. The Hoover Presidential Foundation staff is ready to assist you with your membership needs or charitable gifts in support of the Hoover campus and the museum renovation. And you can learn more about that and even show your support at timelessvaluescampaign.org. And there is still time for last minute gifts to qualify for that 25% uh, Iowa Hoover State tax credit. On behalf of all of us here at the Hoover campus and the participating public libraries, we thank you for joining us and look forward to your next visit to the Hoover campus. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. <laughs>